sound of revival. Lord, 
church. Come on, let us all stand to our feet in our house tonight. Come on, I, I come expecting to hear a word from God tonight. How many come in expectation of what God is going to do in this house tonight? Come on, let me encourage somebody that God is here. He's here for you. And the best is yet to come. Hallelujah.
he's in this house like you know he's in control. Oh, come on, if you know he's in control, somebody clap those hands and give God a shout of praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, can we lift those hands in this house? Come on, if you really believe that your God is in control and you have need of nothing, why don't you lift those hands in this place? Say, you are, you are the great I am. You are, you are the great I am. You are, you are the great I am. You are the great I am. You are, you are the great I am. You are, you are the great I am. You are, you are the great I am. Come on, somebody, let's worship him in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Come on, the I am that I am is here right now. Somebody lift up your voice, lift up your hands in this house. Come on, he's my provider, he's my everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, sing, I have everything. I have everything I need. I have everything.
Somebody worship him in this place. Yeah. You are the I am. Yeah. Yes. Why don't you lift that up right where you're standing? Lift it up in the name of Jesus. You are the I am. You are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. You're everything that I need. Everything I need is in Jesus. He is the I am. happen in the name yeah, of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Are you all excited to be at Impact 2021? Just want to go over a couple of announcements. I know we had a few, many that came in tonight. So we just want to let you know, following the service, we're going to have an incredible time at Gator Mike's. <laughs> yes. If you made it last year, you're going to want to make it this year. We're going to take advantage of beautiful Florida we're going to play miniature golf. There's riding of carts <laughs> and so much more. There are wristbands that will be sold out in the back. So you want to make sure you get it now. From what I understand, it's going to be closing at 2.30, 2.30 a.m. So, you know, unless the Holy Ghost has you tearing at the altar, amen, you want to change, get dressed, and head on over, amen. All right, so all ministers, pastors, evangelists, and your families are welcome to, welcome to an amazing gourmet dinner. Our dining lounge is located to your left and my right behind the platform. Amen. How many are thankful and grateful for apostolic ministers? Amen. 
Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you do, do not forget about our service tomorrow at noon with Reverend Cornelius Williams. Any, any peak visitors this year? Anybody make it out to peak this year? I watched online and guess what? He's the finisher. He said, there's going to be some of you who won't leave here the same because God is the finisher. Amen, amen. Rock Church, let's welcome all of our guests and visitors to Impact 2021. We'd like to welcome all of our guests that are streaming online. We wish you were here. Why don't we take a moment to step out of our seats and greet one another in the name of Jesus. Amen.
you're having a great time tonight, put your hands together and give God a praise. Woo! How many of you enjoyed the incredible ministry of Pastor Joe Buxton last night? Were you blessed? Amen. As you make your way to your seats, I just want to again tonight say what an absolute privilege and an honor it is to have all of you with us this week for Impact International Youth Conference. I'd like to do something just very quickly. Amen. If you are, if you are a pastor or a preacher, a minister, would you please just stand very quickly? If you are a pastor, a minister, an evangelist, would you help me one more time give a great big round of applause to honor honor all of the great men of God represented in this house? Amen. I want to say on behalf of this church that we are so privileged to have you in the house of the Lord with us. Again, we want to invite you and your families, if you are uh, a minister, pastor, preacher, we've got an awesome Awesome gourmet meal prepared for you uh, right to, to my right and your left tonight. We invite you to do that. And if you haven't got your tickets yet for Gator Mike's, don't delay after the service. I do not believe they will be selling them at Gator Mike's. So you don't want to be left in the dark while everybody else is having fun. Amen. Amen. At this time, would you please put your hands together and welcome the Rock Church Sanctuary Sign Team.
give the Rock Church, their band, their, their praise team, their choir, their sign team, their, their bishop, their bishops, first lady, everybody. Let's give them a, a loud hand clap of appreciation. We appreciate them putting on this meeting. You can remain standing just for a second as our ushers prepare to serve us. I was, I saw Brother Bass today in the a restaurant, and uh, there are just some things that can only happen in a situation like this. This is a beautiful thing where people from all over can come, different church cultures, different ways of worship, different styles of songs, and we can come together because there's a common denominator among us. And it's not who's preaching. It's not who's playing. It's the one whom they're playing to. It's the one whom they're singing to. They signed to. And one of the, I, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm old. You saw my post last night. My feet were killing me. I'm bringing this rug downstairs with me so I can stand on it. They sang a song. There was a nice little theme earlier tonight. God is in control. God is in control. COVID's not in control. Taliban's not in control. The White House is not in control. Fear is not in control. God's in control. 
And this is what the Lord told me to tell you. I'm not here to preach. I, I know all, man, I know when preachers get up here and take up offerings. Every preacher says, dear Lord, have mercy. There's his 15 seconds of fame. Nobody will have him preach, but he's going to preach at the offering. So that's what I'm about to do. <laughs> when Bishop Williams asked me to do this, I said, are you sure? You may lose friends over this. He said, I want you to. I said, oh, I will do it. I'll do it. Lord spoke to me a while ago when they were singing God is in control and I am. When we come to these type meetings, there is a very easy target that we can preach to, and that's for people who have backslid, they've walked away from truth. We're trying to pull them back in. We're trying to get them reconnected. And oftentimes there is an element that is not overlooked, I'm not saying that. It's just one that we don't maybe give attention to. And that's the people who are living for God. These young people are here tonight because they want to be here. Not every young person is out wanting to get drunk tonight. Not every young person in this building is backsliding. Not everybody's compromising truth. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Not everybody is afraid of what's going to happen tomorrow because we know the God that's already there. I'm a, if you really believe he's in control, then you know that your God is already in the tomorrow. It doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. It doesn't matter what happens next week. Our God that we serve is able. Interesting thing about Daniel 3 is that the three Hebrew boys were doing what was right. They were doing what was right. There are many young people in this sanctuary tonight, many of you in this choir loft who are singing your guts out, and you're doing what is right. And as pastors, we, we are often asked, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? We don't know what's going to happen. But we know the one who does know what's going to happen. And in Daniel 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're brought before Nebuchadnezzar. And a very interesting thing about the devil is he'll give you two chances. If you don't bow the first time, he'll give you another chance. Y'all can preach that. You're welcome. If you don't bow the first time, he'll, he'll give you another chance. And if it don't happen on the second one, he'll give you a third one. And so the three Hebrew boys come before him and he says, now listen, uh, word's gotten back to me that certain of you, because God's always had a certain. I say not everybody's backsliding. God's always had a certain. Not everybody's compromising holiness. God's always had a certain. Not everybody's interested in walking away from truth. God has always had a certain. And so the certain is standing before him, and he says, I'm going to give you one more chance, young people, to compromise, to bow down, to listen to the narrative of fear. To listen to the fear mongers who was trying to drown out who you know and what you know. Boy, I would love to have been there. Because he, he said, we're not careful to answer you. Man, we're not worried about you. You don't scare us. You don't intimidate us. You're not who we serve. <laughs> Listen, you got power to kill us, and that's fine. But what you don't understand is that you killing us just gets us to where we're going that much quicker. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what some of you need to do? You need to change the way you look at dying. 
Because if you knew where you were going, you would realize that dying ain't the end. Because uh, your last breath in front of the king, Nebuchadnezzar, will be your first breath before the king of kings. So they get thrown in. They got thrown in for doing what was right. Thrown in for doing what was right. They watch them. They're waiting for these young people to die, burn the death, be entertained by the death of these non-complying, non-idol worshiping certain Jews. And the amazing thing is that God will allow you to get put into the furnace. I'm talking about for doing what's right. God will allow you. All you young people that are here tonight, let me tell you what I feel. I told Brother Bass yesterday, I'm not, I'm, I am not prophetically speaking this. Lord have mercy. Ain't nobody pay me. Ain't nobody. I'm not running for any position because I wouldn't get it anyway. But I am going to tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost. This very well could be the last youth meeting that we come together on this earth. I mean, if you really believe that we're in the end times, this could be it. This could literally be the last time we see each other on this side. Don't know what's going to happen over in Afghanistan. Rumors are China and Russia are ready to work with the Taliban. Look, just read, man. Just educate yourself. Understand where we, where we are at in the big picture. And we may be entering into a furnace for doing what is right. And God will have allowed it. But while he may let you get in there, he won't leave you there by yourself alone. I said he will allow you to get in there, but he won't leave you there for long by yourself. Because Nebuchadnezzar looked and he said, wait, 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 wait a minute. It did not throw three men bound into the fiery furnace, but lo, I see four men walking and one Ha, looks like to be the son of God. What I'm here to encourage some young people is this right here. If you go through hell in the next few weeks, months, years that God allows, just know this, that when you are in the furnace, he won't leave you there for long. And there's one greater than the situation. That's going to step in. And when he steps in, he turns it around. Ah, I said when he steps in, oh, we're about to give. We're about to give cheerfully because we know that if this is the last time we give on planet Earth, we're going to give with a smile on our face because if this is it, the same God who turned and Daniel 3 will be the same God who will turn it around in 2021, 2022, 2023. It doesn't matter when it happens. Our God is able. You want to get to that great God tonight? We learned by two people. We learn what not to do, and we learn what to do. You want to know who you want to be like? The ones who can shout at the offering. I'm done. Musicians, please come. We're about to give cheerfully around here. And this is what's going to happen. It's Friday night. 
My feet are killing me. And I will give you everything these knees can handle. Praise God. So all you skinny people, whoo, shout for us fat ones. Hallelujah. <laughs> now we're going to give cheerfully because this could be the last time we do this together. So as our ushers come and you give, we're going to give because we are thankful for a meeting just like this that us pastors could bring our young people to, that I could bring my son and my, and my youth group to. And we're going to give with a smile on our face. And we're going to worship and we're going to celebrate about a God who can turn it around. God, in the name of Jesus, bless every giver, not just what they give, but how they give it. As we give sinnerfully tonight, let your glory fill this house. Anoint the man of God. Let the word go forth. Return not void. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, somebody give.
there's anybody in the building uh, that God turned it around for you. I dare you to take 50 seconds uh, and give God uh, your best. If you know you should be dead, but you're here tonight, give him a praise. If you should have lost your mind, but God kept you, give him your best praise tonight. Clap your hands one more time and give God a praise. that came expecting something great from God tonight. I want you to lift your hands in the air as high as you can get them right now. And with expectation in your spirit, I want you to begin to ask God right now. Come on, somebody lift your voice. There's something that's about to break loose all over this sanctuary tonight. There's something about to transpire across this house tonight. Oh, come on, before we ever assembled this week, there was a God in heaven uh, that knew we would be here uh, and sent angels uh, to camp round about this place. It is my distinct privilege tonight to bring to this desk one of the greatest preachers of our day today great man of God that is being used all across our nation in such a profound, profound way. Pastor Wesley Jackson is pastoring a thriving revival church in Generette, Louisiana. God is using this man in so many multifaceted ways across our country. He is no stranger to this impact conference. As a matter of fact, if you were here last year, you'll remember the word of the Lord, a generation or world in need of a Caleb. And last year on Friday night, only time and heaven will reveal to us the impetus of this man's ministry. And it is a privilege and an honor to have him back here again this year on Friday night to minister the word of the Lord to us in this place. Pastor Jackson, without any further ado, we want you to come and we want you to take your liberty. In the, it's Friday night. We have nothing better to do than what is happening right now in this sanctuary. We're with you with whatever God said to do. We want you to come and deliver your heart to us. One more time, would you put your hands together with faith in your spirit as he comes to deliver the word of the Lord to this house tonight. everybody praise the Lord everybody else praise the Lord everybody why don't everybody give him a hand clap of praise and thanksgiving if you've got a voice you are to lift it and give him a shout of praise right now he is great and greatly to be praised you may be seated here for just a moment and it is not your honor to have me tonight, but rather it is my distinct honor to be allowed to minister to such a wonderful, wonderful host of young men and young women. And I like and agree with what Brother Clack had to say in that I believe you're here because you want to be here. I believe you're here because you love God. I believe you're here because you want to see the kingdom expand and grow through your effort. And, and I salute you tonight. I give great high honor to brother and sister Randy Williams, Isaac, Judah, the Williams family, first class, top notch. That's right. 
if you can't like Randy and Barbara Williams, something's wrong with your liker. You need to get fixed. It ain't them, it's you. And uh, I leaned over to him and in the middle of that uh, signing, which I was thoroughly enjoying, and I said, you can get by with stuff that the rest of us would absolutely get crucified over. How you do it, I don't know, but favor ain't fair. God bless you. Uh, I'm enjoying impact. I really am. To the Rock Church of Fort Myers, thank you for opening up your doors and hosting us in such a wonderful way. The food, the fellowship has already been tremendous. The word of God that went forth last night, God bless Brother Joel Buxton. He had to leave this morning, but we honor him. His wife still here with us sons we honor them tonight god bless brother and sister buxton the buxton family tomorrow my friend brother cornelius williams will be doing it like only he can and it's going to be good you don't want to miss it i'm honored to be with these great men and uh, i'm get my part out of the way I don't know that I'm going to hurry. Nobody else has. But uh, I am, I am going to give you what God gave to me here in just a moment. I give honor to my family tonight. Uh, I love my wife and my three children, Isabella, Brant, and Annabelle. Uh, I, I love my, my wife and my children. And uh, I, I love Impact because uh, they all wanted to come. And, and uh, part of it, contrary to what Brother Clack said, uh, they come to hear me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I'm glad that they want to hear me because uh, most of the time they act like they're not hearing me. So I was glad to know that they, they, they want to hear me. <laughs> it's, it's encouraging. And, and so uh, I love them. We have some of our wonderful saints from Calvary Pentecostal Church here tonight. We love our church and many of them listening online, but what a majority of them have done is they have joined with this local church the last couple of weeks in praying and fasting for this meeting. And so I honor them tonight. Every singer, server, usher, greeter, parking lot attendant, hospitality room put together. God bless all of y'all. This, this kind of stuff don't just happen. It, it's uh, Brother Hoffer, our friend, doing a tremendous work with Holy Ghost Radio. We love he and Sister Hoffer. Glad to see them tonight. My friends, I've got a lot of them here. And then tonight I give uh, double honor to my bishop. Uh, and I, I love him. I wouldn't be here today without a man of God in my life. And I honor my bishop, Bishop Joe Holmes, tonight. I honor his son, one of my dearest friends, Pastor Nathan Holmes. Happy to see him here tonight. And uh, I was thinking, and, and I'm going to preach here in just a minute, but I was thinking in a day when preaching and access to many different flavors of church are readily available 24 hours a day, it's important that we never forget that our pastor, your pastor, our man of God, is not just a voice in our lives but it is the voice in our lives and if you're watching or listening to somebody else's service and they contradict how your pastor teaches and preaches it your pastor's right and what you're listening to online is god planted you where he wanted you and uh, I, I, I appreciate love my bishop matter of fact I felt such a burden for these services, and God had spoke something to me. Never preached it, 
I may never preach it again, but I, I wanted to preach out of his Bible. And uh, he sent his Bible through Pastor Nathan Holmes for me to preach out of tonight. And so I may not preach good, but I'll enjoy reading out of his, out of his Bible. And Pastor Holmes said he better get it back as soon as this service is over. But I got to thinking I can run faster than he can. And, uh, and then I got to thinking about this. It won't be the first thing I've stole from Bishop. <laughs> so, I mean, what's one, what, what's one more? Uh, but um, I'm, 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 really, uh, I'm really feeling good uh, about what God's doing, what God's doing in our movement, what God's doing at Impact, what God's doing in the church at large. This ain't a bad day for the church. This is the greatest day that the church has ever lived in. The generation to whom the ends of the world shall come and the last day labor shall be empowered and have the same pay as the first day labor. I'm glad to be a part of the church of the living God tonight. I asked Bishop Elder, we honor him tonight. I asked him to sit up here Without a bishop and sister elder, there would be no pastor and sister Randy and Barbara Williams. Thank God for faithful men of God. And then very quickly, while you're turning with me to the book of Matthew chapter number 16 and then John chapter number 8, I did ask about doing this. I was giving the liberty to do so. And so I, uh, uh, I want to ask a couple of my peers that believe like I believe and, and are going to, to help me tonight. I'm, I'm going to ask them uh, to come. I've seen Brother John Hare, my neighbor. Come up here, Brother Hare. Uh, bring Brother Dykes with you. Amen. I'm glad Brother Dykes is still alive, still here with us. What a miracle. I'm going to ask Brother Holmes to come and, of course, Brother Williams, Brother Clagg, man, Brother Bass, come on up here. If I didn't call you, it's not because I didn't want to. It's just because we're out of seats. Uh, but I've got many friends here tonight. I've seen Brother Joe Riley and both Brother Parkers. And if I didn't call your name, it's not because you're not my friend. I, I just, I didn't see you. I want to ask one other thing, how many, how many 30 and under preachers do we have here tonight? I want to see your hand. Or young men feeling your call and aspiration to the ministry. Let me see your hands. Hey, Amen. I want you to come, and uh, it's not going to be that comfortable uh, when you're sitting down, so it might help you help me and stand up. But I want you to come quickly, 30 and under, and I want you to come sit on these risers right here. Ministers, your pastor recognizes you as a young minister. Or you, you've talked to him about your call. Quickly, quickly, quickly. If there's young ladies in the house, don't you be intimidated. Get up here. As long as you're 30 and under. Uh-huh. Come on up here anyways, girl. <laughs> Don't tell me that nobody wants to do it. <laughs> I feel such a burden tonight to preach to this generation and to preach to our young preachers and preach to preachers' kids and preach to people who feel a burden to labor in your local church. And everybody here tonight, you need to understand, has a calling. Every one of us are called. We are called. We are to be disciples ambassadors of Christ amen brother may hurry up and get up here amen come on quick man. they'll think they think we was racist prejudice I mean let fake news get a hold of you not being up here we're all in trouble amen Will you help me deliver my heart tonight? I have a word from God for this service tonight. Will you help me? 
How many of you prayer warriors will help me tonight? How many of you precious saints of God that recognize this is our hour? You're going, you're going to help me preach just a little bit. Come on, before we even go to the word of the Lord, why don't you just close your eyes and connect with God tonight? Matthew chapter number 16, John chapter number 8, Matthew chapter number 16, John chapter number 8, Matthew chapter number 16. Verse number 15. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter had the message. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Peter, I'm glad that you know who I am, but I also want you to know that I know who you are. Uh-huh. I, I know who, who you are, Peter. I, I know that Satan wants to sift you as wheat. I know that you're going to deny me thrice on the crucifixion eve i i know all about you peter but you're still one of mine and i've still got a message that i want to give you set upon this rock this revelation of who i am this message everybody shout message this message this word this understanding this revelation of who i am and understanding that you know that i know who you are I will build my church. And this is what is beautiful about my church, Peter. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And Peter, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. I'm, I'm giving them to you, Peter. And whatever you bind, whatever you loosen, that's how it's going to be in the heaven you've got the keys you've got the message on this message on this revelation and understanding i'm going to build something that even the gates of hell shall not prevail against very quickly john chapter number eight verse number 31 john chapter number eight verse number 31 then said jesus to those jews which everybody say believed on him believed on him believed in him they they were believers of the message they were embracers not just hearers but doers and this is what jesus said to them if ye what why don't everybody say continue if you continue in what my word if you continue in my word my message my way of doing things then are ye my disciples indeed and if you continue in my word and are my disciples you're not going going to know a truth because there are not different variants of truth you're going to know the truth you, you're going to know me because i am the way the truth and the life you, you you're going to know the message you're going to know who i am what i like what i don't like what i expect what i bless what i curse if you if you continue in the word you're going to know all these things and you're going to know the truth and the truth shall make you free 
If you continue in my word, you're my disciple. You're going to learn and know the truth. And the truth is going to make you free. And what I have come to minister and preach to this wonderful audience tonight, and I hope to very quickly make sense out of this, get out of the way, and let God do what I know that He desires and wants to do. I want to simply preach to you from this thought. Please, 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 don't mess with our message. Don't water it down. Don't dumb it down. Don't make it more easy. Don't make it more user-friendly. Don't try to make a shortcut out of it. Don't try to make it less burdensome because there's not many variances of truth. There's only one truth and only truth, only the message of the church of the living God has the power to set people free. I, I feel the help of the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. I believe that miracles and signs and wonders are getting ready to take place. I believe callings are getting ready to be given. I believe that revival is getting ready to break out. I believe that out of us. Please don't try to change and mess with our message. God bless you as you're seated for the next few moments in the rich, wonderful presence of our great God. I want to very quickly remind you again tonight, I know that I am preaching and speaking to the choir. You know these things. You believe these things. You have embraced and understand these things. But I want to publicly remind you and emphatically declare to you once again that the church of the living God is the most wonderful, glorious, victorious entity this side of heaven. I want to remind you that the church is not anemic tonight. It's not barely getting by. It's not on the verge of being put out because the church is built upon the rock, the revelation of who Jesus Christ really is. And, and it doesn't matter what I do, and it doesn't matter what you do, and it doesn't matter what the world does, and it doesn't matter what happens outside of our little groups. Uh, the church uh, shall not ever be prevailed against. Uh, for Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. I want to remind you that, that God has always had in his mind from the creation of man even until now, a people that would have authority and dominion and experience increase uh, and be the solution, not the problem uh, here on planet Earth. Uh, it started with just a man, and then from that man, God gave him a wife, but then through their fall and disobedience to the message, uh, their disobedience to the word of God, sin entered the world and began to create such chaos and havoc. And, and I know our world looks bleak and it's chaotic right now, but, but it didn't just start being chaotic. It didn't just start being dismal. For in Genesis chapter number 6, you read that the earth had gotten so bad, man upon the earth, that it repented God that he had even made man. But then something happened. There was a man that found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I think it's important that you understand that grace did not find Noah. Noah found grace. It took somebody recognizing that God's not happy. 
God's not going to let all this just go by. Judgment's sure to come. And I don't deserve to get out of this. But I want to find some way and somehow escape what's sure to come. And Noah found grace. And let me tell you what that grace was. It was a message. Noah, if you'll build it like this, if you'll do it like that, if you'll pitch it in here and pitch it out there and put a door right here and a window right there, you don't deserve to get out of it, Noah. But through the message and the word, We see that God would make a covenant with Abraham, and he would say, Abraham, I got a word for you. If you'll do things my way, I, I, I'm not calling you because you're, 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 you're a lot. I'm not calling you because you're mighty. I'm just, I'm just calling you because I feel like you'll be obedient. And so if you'll be obedient, I'm, I'm going to enter a covenant with you because I'm going to have a people. I'm, I'm going to have an entity, a peculiar people, a royal priest. I'm going to have a church on the earth uh, and I'm so determined uh, and I'm so going to back it uh, and I'm so going to empower it uh, that because I can swear by no greater uh, I'm going to I'm just talking to you about what you're a part of tonight because I can swear by no greater uh, I swear by myself uh, that I'm going to bless you uh, I'm going to multiply you uh, you're not going to have to do any cursing uh, I'll curse Curse everybody that curses you. I'll bless everybody that blesses you. But because of the fall of the first Adam, there really could not be that entity with such power and authority and dominion until the second Adam. Because by disobedience from the first Adam, sin entered the world. But through the obedience of the second Adam, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, authority uh, and power uh, and dominion uh, and help uh, and hope uh, was restored. Uh, but it wasn't restored to the world. Uh, it was restored to the church. Uh, it wasn't restored because of this or because of that. It was restored uh, to a people who make themselves ready. He didn't empower everybody. He empowered the church. He didn't promise hope through everybody. He promised hope through the church. He didn't promise safety for the world. He promised safety and deliverance for the church. He didn't promise healing and help for just anybody. Anybody can experience it, but you got to be a part of the church uh, because it's if my people, which are called by my name, uh, if they humble themselves uh, and if they pray and if they seek my face, uh, I'm not going to heal everybody's land, but I'll heal their land. Uh, I'm not going to hear everybody's prayer, but I'll hear their prayer. Uh, I've come to proudly and boldly and emphatically to the Carol Friday night of impact. If you a part of the church, uh, everything's gonna be all right uh, while the rest of the world goes down. Uh, the church uh, is going up and out. Uh, for in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, the dead uh, in Christ, uh, the church that went before us, uh, they're gonna rise, uh, and then we which are alive and remain uh, shall be called up to be forever with the Lord. You can be seated. I'm just talking to you right now. Because of that, because the church is the only thing empowered, it's important you hear me, Generation Z. It's important that you understand that only the church can provide the help, provide the order, provide the structure provide the deliverance, provide the blessings, provide the increase, provide all that empty man is looking for in this world. Politicians can't do it. 
I don't care if they're Republican, Democrat, or Independent. They haven't been empowered. It's the church that's empowered. Social reform can't but trying to make everybody the same social class uh, can't fix the problems uh, that's in America and in our world. Psychologists and psychiatrists and pharmaceutists, uh, they can't do it. Uh, the only hope uh, that this world has uh, is the church uh, of the living God. Uh, governments rise and governments fall. Uh, people come uh, and people go. Uh, one generation is birthed, uh, another generation dies. Uh, but the church of the living God, uh, it is eternal. Uh, and it is triumphant. Let me tell you about the church. Huh? It's the answer for poverty. Let me tell you about the church. Huh? It's the answer for racism. Huh? It's not teaching some critical race theory in some school uh, and making matters worse. Uh, it's the church of the living God uh, where everybody's culture uh, has to come to the culture uh, of the cross. This is the answer for depression uh, because at the church is where his presence is. Uh, and in his presence, uh, there's fullness of joy. This is where affliction can be taken care of. This is where pandemics and pestilence can be turned away. Because if there be any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them call for somebody in the church that knows how to pray. And when they anoint their head with oil, it's not just about healing their body, but I save their soul. Let me tell you about the church. She's bad to the bone. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you about her. She's not limping tonight. She, she's not struggling tonight. Uh, you may be struggling, uh, but the church ain't struggling. Uh, you may be barely getting by, uh, but the church ain't barely getting by. Uh, you may have struggled to get in here tonight, uh, but the church uh, has been blood washed, uh, blood bought. Uh, Jesus himself uh, paid the price uh, so that he uh, whom the Son sets free uh, is free in deed. You ought to thank God for the church right now. You understand tonight that only the church can bring hope. There are not many churches there's only one body. There's only one bride. And what I've really come to preach is that what makes her so victorious and what makes her so powerful and what, what, what makes her so full of hope and so full of help, it's it's not the people that she's made up of. It's not their talent. It's not their intellect. It's not their education. It's not their discipline. It's not them knowing how to win friends and influence people and how to check this off and check this in and check this out. It, it's none of those things. What, what I've really come to preach to you tonight is what empowers the church is her message. Or really more importantly, what empowers the church is not just her message, but obedience and submission and total alignment with her message. Uh, for if you be willing uh, and obedient, uh, you're going to eat the good of the land. Uh, 
But if you refuse uh, and you rebel, uh, you're going to be devoured with a sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Uh, it's our message uh, that empowers us. Uh, it's our message uh, that brings healing and hope. Uh, it's our message uh, that brings deliverance and increase. Uh, it's our message uh, that can preach you out of poverty. Uh, it's our message uh, that can preach you out of suicide. Uh, it's our message uh, that can preach a needle out of your arm. Uh, it's our message uh, that can preach adultery and fornication uh, out of your heart. Uh, it's our message uh, that can cause you to believe in healing. Uh, for faith uh, cometh by hearing uh, and hearing uh, the word of the Lord. And so, so there may be people here tonight limping, barely getting along, don't know how you're going to make it, afraid you're going to lose out before you can get back to impact tomorrow at 12. It's not that there's something wrong with the church. It's you're messing with the message. You've given in to the adage that's been since the beginning. Did God really say? Is that really the message that he was declaring? And I know that he told you if you didn't listen to the message... That it was going to be destruction. But he's just afraid that if you don't listen to him, you're going to come up with a better message. And you're going to come up with a better method. And you're going to come up with a better way to see increase. And you're going to come up with a better way to find joy. And you Better and better and better. Until you get bitter and bitter and bitter. See, see, from the creation of man until now, there has always been enmity between the spirit and the flesh. What the spirit is speaking and what the flesh is speaking. And the war is over our message. Because the only way that the enemy can stop you and the only way that the enemy can hinder me is if I mess with the message. Because if I continue in his word, I'm his disciple indeed. I'm not just his disciple in name, but I'm living out the message. I'm living out the word. I don't just come and hear about being blessed. I'm walking in blessings. I don't just come and hear about being healed. I'm walking in healing. I don't come and just listen about having authority. I walk in authority. I don't come and just hear about changing the atmosphere everywhere I put my feet. Uh, I change what's going on uh, because if I continue uh, in his message, uh, I become his disciple indeed. Uh, and the more I continue uh, and the more of his message I get, I get to the place uh, where I know the truth uh, and I'm made free. very quickly give you a few scriptures so you know this isn't an opinion but but out of the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established right out of Egypt crossing through the wilderness headed for the land of promise brother Williams God stops him and he, he causes Moses to preach in Leviticus chapter number 26 if you walk in my statutes and you keep 
my commandments and do them. You, 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 you can't just hear them. you got to walk in them. You can't just stand and amen on Friday night at impact. you got to give them out on Monday. And you got to go back home and you got to give it out on Tuesday. And you, you got to walk. He said, and if you'll do this, uh, I will give you rain. Uh, I'll give you what you need for increase. Uh, the land shall yield increase. Uh, the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Uh, your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, uh, and the vintage shall reach unto sowing time. In other words, uh, my message is so powerful that it defies normal culture and seasons. Uh, I'll let you get to the place uh, where the reaper is overtaking the sower. Uh, and you're sowing with this hand, but you're reaping with that hand. Uh, and it's the world that sows and then reaps, uh, but you just walk in. Uh, I don't want to cross theological swords with anybody, at least not this soon into the Word. But if revival is seasonal in your assembly, uh, it's not the church, it's the message. It might be how you're letting people walk, how you're letting people talk, how you're letting people dress, what you're letting people say. Because Jesus uh, in his word declares, uh, if you do it my way. He said, I'll give you peace. You'll lie down and none will make you afraid. It means you can rest. I'll rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. You'll chase your enemies instead of your enemies chasing you. They'll fall before you by the sword. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you if you just respond. And walk out my message. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read on, but then he tells them, but if you mess with the message and you try to do it your way, your enemies are going to overtake you. There's not going to be any peace in your church. There's not going to be any increase. Every time you pray one through three is going to leave. When you start trying to do it your way, I'm going to send pestilence. I'm going to send the sword. Because the only way that this works uh, is you do it my way. Uh, and that's why I've come to Impact 2021. Uh, and I've come to preach to Gen Z. Uh, I've come to preach to every believer under the sound of my voice. Uh, don't mess with our message. Uh, please don't mess with our message. Paul would write in Romans 1, I'm not ashamed of the message. I'm just showing you that it's our message. It's not you. It's not me. It's the word. I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed, Romans 1, of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the message. For it, not my singing, not my ability, not my giving, not my talent, but it's the word that is the power of God all the way unto salvation. And the good thing about the word is it's for whosoever will. To the Jew first. You can be seated as I hurry. The wise man would write in Proverbs 30. Every word of God, not just some of it, not just the parts I like. I can't get the spirit of the pen knife. I, I, I've got to have all of it because truth uh, is all or nothing. Because if you have just one part of truth missing, uh, you no longer have a truth. Uh, you have a lie. 
See, you can't just get some of it right. You got to get all of it right. That's why, Timothy, you got to study. You got to study. You got to study to show thyself approved. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his word. Don't mess with the message. Because if you do, he's going to repute, prove you. And he's going to make a liar out of you. There's a lot of people that did it their way that thought they was going to be the different one. Jesus said it like this. Think not, Matthew 5, that I'm come to destroy the law. I didn't come to destroy nothing. The law, the prophets, I'm not a destroyer. I'm a fulfiller. Everything you was reading about was pointing to me. I didn't come to do away with me. I come to fulfill me. And I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. You, 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 you don't even have to change a big deal. I mean, it, it, it can be something so simple like spiritualizing foot washing and communion or I mean it, it don't have to be a big deal I mean it it don't have to be cutting it all the way off it can be just burning a little bit of it off I mean I mean you 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 don't have to come out in a pair of pants just 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 say it's for modesty reasons and come out in a pair of leggings that stop halfway down your calf and You know what I tell our ladies? We want you to be modest. And if you're really wearing it for modesty, then keep it up above your hemline or make sure that it's all the way down in your shoe with socks over it. But don't, don't, don't confuse us. Don't, 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 don't confuse us because, because if we just mess up on just some little bit of it, and then we change the message and tell people that it's okay. Uh, he said, you're going to be called uh, the very least uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm not here to be little. Uh, I'm not here to barely get by. Uh, I'm not here to limp my way into heaven. Uh, I'm not Pastor Jenneret for us to have three stuck in a corner until God comes back. Uh, I'm here. Uh, I'm here uh, to see revival. Uh, I'm here. Uh, to see increase. I'm here to see power. But it takes the wholeness of the message. Psalms 107. Fools. 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 You call them enlightened, but they're fools. You call them revelant, but they're fools. You, 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 you say they've just got greater revelation, but they're fools. Fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul hath all manner of meat. They can't hardly take the milk of the word. They sure can't take the meat of the message. They abhor the meat. They want the blessings. They want Christianity with no cross. They want the blessings without sacrifice. They want the increase without giving. They want the wholeness and purity and peace. Finally, finally, they cry to the Lord in their trouble. And he saves them. But you know how he saves them? He sends his word to heal them. 
See, you want somebody to just lay hands on you and shake you two or three times and you speak in tongues for 26 seconds and then go right back out and keep living like you're living and doing like you're doing and wonder why you still got pornography troubles and wonder why you're still living in fear and wonder why you're still being tormented by suicide and wonder why you're so depressed and you don't have any joy. I'll tell you why. Because it's the Word that heals them. Let me tell you, the Word can heal your mind. The Word can heal your emotions. The Word can fix your finances. The Word can give you joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. It's our message. Don't mess with our message. an Old Testament thing. For Jesus would have Matthew record in the 8th chapter in the 16th verse of his gospel when the even was come uh, they brought unto him many that were possessed of devils. It would shock you if we really knew how many possessed people was in our midst. But see, in too many places, we medicate the devils rather than preach to the devils. But Jesus cast them out, Brother Dykes. He didn't wrestle with them. That's theatrics. He's truth, not theater. I have them come in, Brother Holmes, sometimes acting stupid at Calvary. Everybody wants me to lay hands on them. I ain't laying hands on them. Jesus didn't lay hands on them. Jesus stepped into that pulpit and started preaching to them. He didn't pour oil on their head. He started preaching the word. He cast out the Spirit with his word and, and healed them all. I'm not going to wrestle with no devil. I'm going to preach, repent, get baptized in Jesus' name. Get the Holy Ghost. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I feel some young men and some young ladies uh, that want to get back to the Bible. Uh, they want to get back to the basics. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to hurry. I'm getting there. Paul, Paul, he said it like this. He said, I'm not coming to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. By the time they knocked on your door, you tried everything for help that had said it help you. And yet you were still having to live on government assistance. She wouldn't mind me telling this, she'll tell it. She still was contemplating suicide. Uh, she still wasn't in her right mind. Uh, she still didn't know how she was going to make it. Uh, but because somebody didn't come to impress her, uh, but they said, all we know uh, is the message uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not going to protest. Uh, I'm not walking a picket line. Uh, I'm not in the politics. Uh, but I got the power of the world. Because the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. It can get into the places that medicine can't help. It can work its way into the places uh, that prescription can't numb. Uh, 
it can work its way uh, into a place uh, that the psychiatrists don't know what to deal with. Uh, let me tell you about the word. Uh, it's the answer for the abused. Uh, it's the answer for the molested. Uh, it's the answer for the homosexual. Uh, it's the answer for the lesbian. Uh, it's the answer uh, for poverty. Uh, it's the answer. Oh, Timothy, <laughs> Timothy, Timothy, don't mess with our message. Preach the word. Preach it in season. Preach it out of season. It's, it's always right, Timothy, to preach the word. I walked in the Ephesus and preached the beast of Ephesus out. I walked in the Corinth and preached healing in my apron, uh, and they started sending it out. Uh, I walked in the Thessalonica uh, and I preached the powers that be on their face. Uh, Timothy, uh, preach the word, uh, preach the word. Uh, don't water it down, uh, don't change it. Uh, don't manipulate it, just preach it. Uh, there's coming a day, Timothy, uh, they don't want to endure sound doctrine. Uh, they want another message, uh, but make full proof of thy ministry. Uh, leave intact with a made up mind. Uh, I'm going home, uh, and I'm going to teach a Bible study uh, about who Jesus is. Uh, I'm going home. Uh, I'm going to submit to them that have to rule over me. I'm going home, and I'm going to be a doer. Because on this rock, I've come, I've come with a heavy heart. Not, not, not because I'm afraid of you. Not because I don't believe that you don't want it. But I just know how tempting it is to try to escape the pressure. And to try to escape what seems like is glitz and glamour and gold. I know what it's like to to struggle and preach the word and it don't seem like anybody will listen. And somebody across town that's not preaching anything, it seems like. That's why I'm preaching to you. I've come to preach to you. Don't be weary, Gen Z, in well-doing because the word works. It's like a hammer. Some Sundays are just as chipping away. And then all of a sudden, uh, there's a breaking through. Uh, for you will reap uh, if you faint not. I'm going to tell you why I'm preaching to you. And I'm, 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 I'm hurrying. I'm closer to being done than... What you thinking when I started? The reason I feel so burdened to preach to you is because there's always been a serpent. There's always been a Sambala and Tobiah. There's always been a Nebuchadnezzar that'll promise you the stars and the world if you'll just stay with him and There's, there's always, there's always been a Simon the sorcerer that just wants it for his own good and gain. And there's always been those that even Paul would marvel and say, how, how did you turn from it so soon? I mean... I mean, just, just 30 years ago, your daddy was an alcoholic. 
Your mama never knew who she was going to wake up to on Saturday. And the Word made a musician out of him. And the Word made a Sunday school teacher out of her. And I marvel, I marvel that just 30 years later that there might be a grandson or granddaughter in here. This says, let's, let, let, let's, you know, I don't even know why they have Brother Jackson preaching youth meetings. He's 41, and one of the most stupid things I've heard lately is people questioning why we'd have elders preach at peak. That's about as stupid as it gets, Brother Williams. I'll tell you why we have elders. Because it's not youthfulness that empowers us. It's the Word. And we need somebody uh, that they've got giants on their wall. Uh, they've got lions in their den. Uh, they've overcome church splits by preaching the Word. Uh, they've preached people out of poverty. Uh, they've preached people in the power. And as long as I sit on that committee, we're always going to push for an elder. We wasn't hired and can't be fired. That's what's pretty good about it. See, see, there's always, there's always people that want you to do it another way. See, it's not intellectualism. It's not education. It's personality. I, I don't say it because you're here. I, I went home and told our church. I, I'm still receiving and, 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 and being encouraged by what you preached in San Jose, Bishop Elder. It, it, it didn't take a scientist to figure out what you were saying. It didn't take a scholar to connect the dots to where you was going. It was just the word. Amen. See, I think sometimes we forget that heaven is not impressed with our talents. How do you impress a God that's got created angels that have perfect pitch? You're good, Brother Kurt, but you're no Gabriel. You're good, Brother Duty, but you're no Michael. They're perfect. They don't know how to mess up. They didn't, they weren't taught it. They just inherited it. They're perfect in everything that they do. And this band was marvelous tonight. But how does it impress a host like that? Heaven is not impressed with our talents. Hell is not afraid of our programs. They've got AA and it's not working. They've got drug addiction classes and they're not impressed with what, what programs we have. But thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. If you got the message. If you got the message. You can have the message and be like Stephen. Uh, and while they're throwing stones, uh, you just keep preaching the word. Uh, and Jesus stands up. Uh, or you can have all hell against you uh, and just keep preaching the word. Uh, and the devil starts shaking. Uh, you know what I've come to tell you? Uh, it's the word. Uh, it's the word. Uh, we don't need playboys. Uh, we don't need politicians. Uh, we don't need Jezebels. Uh, we need some doers of the word. Is this all right tonight? Can I talk to you just a little bit more? Please, 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 please don't mess with our doctrine.
Because, see, it's the message of the new birth that brings power to be delivered. Oh, don't try to water it down. There's still only one doctrine. Except the man be born of the water and of the spirit. Don't get the feeling so much pressure when you go to somebody's church you've admired all your life to try to preach something fancy. Don't mess with the message. Just preach, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and watch what will happen. Just preach, neither is there salvation in any other. Uh, and you talk about having extended revivals uh, when they're getting to an altar, uh, when they're coming out of water, talking in tongues, uh, when God's changing their life. Uh, Please, uh, listen to me, young men. Uh, listen to me, young ladies. Uh, you got to keep preaching, he that believeth uh, and is baptized. Uh, you got to keep preaching. Uh, then Peter said unto them, uh, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, when you come across an Ethiopian official in Acts 8, you got to preach Jesus. Uh, when you go to Cornelius and Acts 10, uh, preach Jesus. Uh, when you come across unbelievers in Acts 19, uh, preach Jesus. Uh, because there's only one Lord, uh, one faith, uh, and one baptism. They turned the world upside down preaching Jesus. Please don't mess with our message. There are no friends to this bride. You're either righteous or wicked. There's, there's no light doctrine exception. Well, they just don't know. No. Nicodemus, marvel not that I say unto you, boy, you must be born again. Because if you stay flesh, you're going to live and die after the flesh. But if you get the message, I'll make a new creature out of you. Uh, you'll walk differently. Uh, you'll talk differently. Uh, you'll act differently. Please. Please. And I preach to you men for just a minute. Please don't change our message of holiness and separation. Can I preach to every one of us? Please don't put pressure on our pastor to change because he's worried about what I might do if he don't. Because see, if he changes, if he changes, it just robs me of what brings power. Because without holiness, I can't see him. And to be received by him, I've got to come out from among them and be separate. And I can't touch the unclean thing. Uh, I can't touch it. I can't, I can't watch 30-second clips of the basketball game as I'm going to bed. And I can't, I can't get just a glimpse of soft pornography. And I, I, I can't just send a secret DM and not in have power. I, I can do that and be deceived. But to have power, I've got to quit touching dirty things. The word is going to heal people tonight. The word is going to help people tonight. Any of you young men got your phone on you? 
it's not even a trick question. I ain't fixing to get you. Yeah. Can, can, can you just go to your screen time? A couple of you others, get yours out too. Come here, Brother Buxton. Come here, Brother Brant. Y'all ain't in trouble. I just, come here, Brother Townley. Come here, Brother Atkins. You're a young evangelist. Come here. I, I don't see this. You, you, you ain't know where it's at. Uh-huh. You know what I'm fixing to show you? That, 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 that it, 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 it's not that preachers get too long to keep your attention because you have a deficit disorder. You have a desire disorder. Because I'm going to say that the average screen time for most of these that are either saying they're called to be preached or feeling they're called to be preached, I would just about guarantee you that their screen time is three hours or exceeding. I mean, am I right or wrong? What, what's yours, Brother Townley? Seven hours. Which seven hours? Nine hours. God bless you. You got out of it. It's about that long. Got it off in church. Whew. That's my boy. You see what I'm telling you? And you say, well, I'm just not smart enough to Bible quiz. No, you're spending too much time on your phone. Where your treasure's at is where you're going to spend your, your time and your energy at. And then you make fun of the preacher because he preached two hours at peak, but he preached people out of hell and he preached people out of destruction. You don't have an attention disorder. You've got a messed up mess. I sure ain't going to ask our pastors about their screen time because theirs is all reading their Bible. I mean, it takes a while to text saints. You, you, you understand what I'm telling you, don't you? Yes, sir. See, see, you can't touch dirty things and have deliverance. Yes. You can't worship God on Sunday night and then go home and watch all the highlights and bow to the idols of the world and... That's why you can't have revival because it's not your talent. It's not you just showing up and being there. It's not even how big of a check your daddy can write. Uh, this kind, uh, this power uh, is because of our mess. I think I'm almost through. I'm, I'm a... I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why that we're having so many dysfunctional church kids sitting on the pew. Are you listening to me, young ladies? You, you know why you don't have any self-worth? Because you've blurred the line of separation. You've bought into the lie that you're not good enough. That's why you sneak around and paint yourself up and... See, it ain't your pastor trying to control your life. It, it, it's not some man that don't want you to look pure, pretty. It's that their spirit's attached uh, to you putting that junk on. Uh, because the reason you're putting it on uh, is because you don't really believe that you was fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, and you've got the world, you've let the world convince you uh, that I got to rub it on here and I got to paint it on there and I got to be pretty. Uh, no, baby girl, uh, you're beautiful. Uh, you're wonderful. Uh, you're the bride of Christ. Uh, it's the message of separation uh, that'll bring you self worth. I wish it was just the world, Brother May, having an identity crisis. But it's the church, Brother Holmes. We're losing preachers. We're losing young men. We're, using, we're losing young women. I was praying about that the other day, Sister Elder. 
And it just come to me. It was just like, it, it, Brother Hare, it, just, it was like jumped out of me. It said, how, how do you think you can dumb down a woman wearing that which pertaineth to a man and then get upset when a man starts wearing that which pertaineth to a woman? See, see, I wasn't being ugly and trying to flex my muscles when I talked about them leggings. I don't want my young men coming out in skirts with leggings underneath them and saying they got on pants. Just like I don't want you to come out with pants hanging out of your skirt and say you got on dresses. Uh, because when you start blurring that line, uh, there was a reason for the separation in dress. Uh, it's so that you wouldn't be confused. Uh, your mama would raise you dressing you like a man and you'd know that you was a man. Uh, she'd raise you dressing like a lady uh, and you know that you're a lady. Uh, we got to get back to the mess. Uh, And I mean, th this is just for Generat, but it's good for all of you. If, 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 if Brother Clack, we don't want our ladies wearing leggings for modesty with a skirt over them, then I don't want to see our young men at home playing basketball in leggings with shorts over them. And long sleeves is not a polo shirt with a... I'm just preaching the generat. You do what you want to wherever you're at. But I want revival and generat. And I'm not running people off. We got more people than we've ever had. We've got more finances than we've ever had. We're having better church than we've ever had. Because the miracle is in our message. Uh, I want to quickly give you this one. But there seems to be an unprecedented attack, Brother Dykes, on our praise and worship. From the left and the right. They, they that don't like it won't accuse us of having rock concerts and light shows and I, I seen not long ago somebody put something up and they had a clip of a rock concert and they had a clip of peak and they had a clip of another service and they said tell us the difference I can tell you the difference who we're playing to who we're playing for, who we're singing about. Music wasn't created in this world. It was created in the heavens. And there's been a light show long before Randy Williams and Fort Myers uh, because he stepped out and hung the stars on nothing. Uh, and put the sun in the sky. Uh, and he said, a light's gonna rule the day. Uh, and a lesser light's gonna rule the night. It's a... Wait, 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 I know what they're gonna say. Well, I'll tell you what makes it wrong is they get to playing that music and they're only responding to the music. You're exactly right, that's what we're doing. You know why? Because there was walls that they couldn't tear down. And there was giants that they couldn't defeat. And there was an adversary that they couldn't overcome. And he said, you're going to march in silence because I just want to see if you're obedient. But when it comes time for the wall to fall, when you hear the trumpet, when you hear the strings, when you hear the music, start shouting. Start looks like because I 
never been the one. But I can tell you what Pentecost looks like. Uh, it looks like hand clapping, uh, twirling, uh, foot stomping, uh, eye running, uh, tongue talking. Uh, it's loud. Uh, it's loud. baby boomer right now I've come to preach to all the armchair quarterbacks on the internet I've come to preach to every sour puss pouting bitter grumpy somebody that don't like it loud I've come to tell you we didn't get this from the world the world got it from us Joshua then look at Nebuchadnezzar and say that was powerful so let's do it at church huh? but Nebuchadnezzar huh, got to thinking about Jericho walls huh? Nebuchadnezzar huh, got to thinking about they were commanded huh, to send up Judah first huh? Nebuchadnezzar got to thinking huh, about them busting up lamps huh, and shouting with a loud noise huh? and Nebuchadnezzar says huh, that works huh? would you hear the sound huh? would you you hear the sound uh, like they worship their God. Uh, you worship our God. You know what I've come to tell you? Don't mess with our praise. Uh, don't mess with our praise. Uh, don't mess with our laugh. Don't mess with our dance. Don't mess with our organ. Don't mess with our stringed instruments. Uh, don't mess with our cymbal. It ain't Babylon, it's Bible. Psalms 47 and 1, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of trial. Psalms 132 and 9, let all the saints shout. Psalms 132, 16, shout aloud for joy. Psalms 32 and 11, uh, shout all uh, that are righteous. Uh, Isaiah 12 and 6, uh, shout Zion uh, for great uh, is the Holy One of Israel. Uh, Psalms 150, uh, praise God in the sanctuary. Uh, praise Him in the firmament of His power. Uh, praise Him for His mighty acts. Uh, praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Uh, praise Him with a trumpet. Praise Him with a psaltery. Uh, praise Him with a harp. Uh, praise Him with a timbrel. Uh, Praise him with a dance, huh? praise him with stringed instruments, huh? praise him with organs, huh? praise him on loud cymbals, huh? praise him on high sounding cymbals, huh? let everything, let everything, let everything that I brought, huh? praise Jesus. Yeah. You ought to take somebody by the hand and dance in the Holy Ghost.
together and give him praise. Come on, lift your voice and give him praise. Come on, I want you to praise him according to how great he is. If you need a healing, start praising him. If you need deliverance, start praising him. If you're battling bitterness, start praising him. If you've got a wounded spirit, start praising it. with 
Jonah for somebody right now because what happens when God's people begin to praise him all of a sudden power begins to flow it quits just being praise and then it becomes the spirit Young lady, the kingdom needs you. Don't mess with the message. Young man, the kingdom needs you. Don't mess with the message. Holy Ghost is here. Take somebody by the hand and pray in the Holy Ghost. You got to send up Judah. But then this kind, the kind that we need here tonight, it comes through prayer. I want you to pray till you're praying in the Holy Ghost. I want you to pray till you're talking in tongues. I want you to pray till your hands start waving organically and your feet start moving in victory. Preacher's daughter, come on, preacher's daughter. We don't need you to be pretty. We need you to walk in power. We don't want to see what kind of purse you have. We don't care what kind of shoes you're wearing. We need you to be able to lay hands on the sick. some preacher's daughters. There's some preacher's daughters. God's wanting to empower you to start a unprecedented revival in your church. Your daddy needs you. Your mama needs you. But you gotta buy in to their
the words directed people. The words liberating people. calling for consecration and dedication. Come on, the Spirit is challenging young men and young ladies to give your life wholly to God. There's young ladies here, God's been dealing with you. There's young men, God's been talking to you. I've watched some of you meeting after meeting after meeting uh, weep tears till they drip off your chin. Uh, the Spirit is giving a clarion call. Uh, give yourself to the kingdom. Give yourself to the gospel. Are there any willing vessels in the house tonight? Are there any willing vessels in the house tonight? It may be a foreign soil. It may be a home Bible study in your mom and dad's living room. It may be a business opportunity uh, so that you're blessed to be a blessing. The God of the message uh, is looking for some willing messenger. Come on, if you're a willing vessel, lift your hand right now. Come on, lift your hand, lift your voice. <laughs> Come on, Pastor Son, don't be bitter. Don't be bitter. Step up and proclaim the message. Oh Lord, I consecrate. <laughs> I dare My life, my will to you. <laughs>
Come on. Come on, the author of the message is looking for some messengers right now. Put your arm around a young lady right now and let that anointing transfer. Come on, men of God, why don't you lay hands on a young man right now? Come on, why don't every man of God lay hands on a young man right now? Come on, preacher's wives, I know you're tired, but why don't you find some, somebody and pray over them right now?
altars are going to remain open tonight. If you're praying, just keep on praying. To all of the pastors, ministers, preachers, whenever you're done praying, whenever you're done in this sanctuary, you can make your way through the door to my right, your left. There's dinner prepared for you. Young people, when you're done praying, don't forget to get your ticket to Gator Mike's in the lobby before you leave so that you can get 